Welcome back. Today we're going to go over simulations and predictions. In order to obtain the probability of various events, a simulation is often conducted. It allows us to represent the likelihood of real life events occurring by using an experiment with similar probabilities. Now this, uh, this method is used by researchers when it is difficult to collect experimental data and when the theoretical probability is unknown. So some examples of that, tossing a coin, rolling a number cube, using a deck of cards, uh, using a random number generator. All right, so in this one it says brainstorm a simulation that could represent the same probability uh, for the following situations. So if we look at this one it says a multiple choice question there's a 25% chance of getting that uh, answer correct. Well I could spin a spinner and that spinner could be um, have four equal spaces that are labeled one through four and I would have a 25% chance of getting a one on that spinner. The weather report shows that there's a 50% chance of rain. Well that's a pretty simple one. We would go ahead and just use flipping a coin and you could flip on tails or heads um, but in this case it says flipping tails on a fair coin. Okay number three. An average basketball player makes 66% of his free throws. So that's two-thirds, 66%. So that would be similar to rolling a one, two, or three, or three or four on a number cube, because that would also result in a third of the options being available. Okay, number four. There is an equally likely chance that a baby is a boy or a girl. Same type of thing. We could draw a red card from a full deck of cards. So we have, in a deck of cards, there's red and black cards, and half of them are red, half of them are black. So if you were to, to try to draw a red card, that would give you the same probability or likelihood that it would happen. All right, so use a simula uh, simulation to determine the likelihood of each event occurring. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Pinkerton have four boys. Each time, or sorry, every time people notice this, they comment about the odds of this happening. The Pinkertons decide to set up a simulation with tri 10 trials to determine the probability. What simulation could be used to represent the likelihood of having a boy or girl? So there's a lot of different ones we could use, but in this case, uh, tossing a coin, you have either heads or tails, boys or girls, um, and then we could go ahead and see the likelihood of this happening. Then it says which outcome represents having a boy, which outcome represents having a girl. You can decide that, but I'm going to go ahead and say that the coin uh, lands on tails represents a boy, while landing on heads would represent a girl. Okay, and then C... How should the simulation be designed in order to account for four different children? Well, in that case, there's actually just four different uh, times that this happens. So the coin has to be tossed four times, and it has to have that result recorded. And then you would go ahead and use that. And then it says 10 different trials would be needed to be conducted. So we would toss this coin four times, write down each event. That would be one trial. Then we would toss the coin four more times write down the results, that would be the second trial. We would toss the coin four more times, write it down, that would be the third trial, all the way up to ten different trials. And that way you could see what was actually happening with the information. Okay, now next thing in our um, notes and the stuff that we're talking about is making predictions. Now making predictions, you have the probability, it's it's used to make predictions and this can be used for future occurrences by setting up uh, and solving a proportion. Now you can't make a prediction on something in the past, it has to be something in the future because you're predicting what will happen. Uh, you can't predict what already happened because it's already done. So in this one, the probability of rolling a 6 on a number cube is 1 sixth. If the number cube is rolled 50 times, then, the, uh, then approximately how many times will the 6 be rolled? Well, that one right there, you just take the probability and you multiply it by the number of times, and then you would go ahead and uh, set up a cross product, and it would tell you that you have 8 and 1 third, or about 8 times. Okay, and we'll talk about this more as we set it up, but we've already done cross products, so you guys should be familiar with that step. Okay, number six, 
we're going to read the scenario, make a prediction based on the information given. So Kinsley surveys a random group of seventh graders as to whether they prefer video games, sports, or neither. Use the survey results to make predi predictions for the entire seventh grade class with 350 students. So what's a reasonable prediction for the total number of seventh graders that prefer video games? So if I look at this information, the very first thing I notice is that it says here of the people surveyed, 15 of them wanted video games, 22 of them wanted sports, and uh, three of them said neither. But if I were to total that, I would go ahead and add them all together. And that means that I would have um, 25 plus 15. So that would be 40 total students that were surveyed. And that's going to help me with uh, setting up my problem. So I'll start by setting up my cross product. I know that there are 15 students that prefer video games out of 40 total surveyed. And then we're going to try to find what was the uh, reasonable pr prediction. So there's 350 students. I don't know how many prefer video games. But I go ahead and set up my cross product. I multiply the 15 times 350 and divide by the leftover, which is 40. And once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and get 131 students. So I can find that 131 students, based off of my data, will prefer video games over sports. Based on the table, what is the most reasonable prediction that the number of votes for video games in the next 80 votes? So if I if I survey 80 people, so this one right here shows 40. If I survey 80, that means it's just doubled. So 40 to 80 is times by 2. Well, a reasonable prediction would make this number and multiply it by 2. So then I would just go ahead and say 15 times 2, and that would give me 30 students. Again, the reason I could do that is because I know for the next 40, those results should just double. Now, will they when we do our experiment? No, but for the prediction part, yeah, we can predict that it would be 30 additional students because it just doubled. All right, last one. So with this one, it says, when you send, a, uh, send mail via the post office, you have an 80% chance that it is delivered to the correct location. If uh, 430 letters are delivered on Monday, then what's the, what is a reasonable prediction for the number of letters that are delivered to the incorrect location? So now this one, that's kind of a trick question, but when we set up our cross product, we go ahead and say uh, the number of letters that were delivered was 430, that's a total. And we also say that we have an 80% chance out of 100 for letters that are delivered correctly. But it says specifically that we want incorrect locations. Well, if 80% is where the correct letters go, that means that 20% is where the incorrect letters are going. So those incorrect locations. And then I can go ahead and cross multiply. So I go ahead and do 430 times 20 divided by 100. And when I have that one finished up, I can go ahead and uh, multiply and divide, and I get 86, which means of the 430 letters, 86 of them will be delivered incorrectly. Okay. On Tuesday, it's reported that 500 letters were delivered to the correct locations. Based on this uh, information, how many letters were delivered on Tuesday? Well, that's a different setup. The first thing is in our cross product, 500 is not a total. That's just the correct. So that's going to go on the top instead of the bottom there in the numerator. And we would set up the same thing where we'd have 100. And that 500 is how many correctly were delivered. So I would have 80% on top. And then x would be the denominator of that first one. Then I go ahead and set up my cross product, 500 times 100 divided by 80. And when I multiply that through, I'm going to go ahead and get 625. So on Tuesday, 625 letters were delivered. Okay, hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day and stay safe.